It is never over as yeah. long as you have 15. And that's why I said, when you're betting this game, remember it's in Vegas. And you know what the rule is in Vegas? The house always wins. The Chiefs are the fucking house. And we're back where we started. Welcome into the post Super Bowl edition of Chasing It on the 33rd Team. Trey Wingo with Chase Daniel. Chase, uh, lather, rinse, repeat. For the first time since the Patriots of 38 and 39, we have back to back Super Bowl champions, and it's the Kansas City Chiefs winning their third Super Bowl in the last four years. Back to back champs. And they do it, Chase, in spectacular fashion, basically as time runs out in overtime with arguably the worst overall team we've had in the Patrick Mahomes era. And we'll get into that in yeah. a minute. This game was certifi certifiably insane on so many levels. Yeah, there's no argument about it. This was the worst team Patrick Mahomes had around him. Like, there's no make no make no like doubt about it. They 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 clinched the playoffs two weeks left in the regular season, like like in the division. Right. So, like like they were they were fighting for the lives the whole time, and and it just came down to like that playoff run. And ultimately, like for me, it was the defense in the first half, yeah. right? Like just just stay close enough. I thought San Fran's defense honestly played really well against the Chiefs' um, offense. And look, they did exactly what the Chiefs' offense kryptonite was the entire year. Was they just played press man to man coverage, jammed the receivers, got home with a four man rush, and they won. And they won yeah. almost every single snap. Like they, like Mahomes didn't get going. They had three points or whatever, six points at half, whatever it was. Three points, three, and, three at the half. Yeah, three, yeah, three, three points at half. And then, like, Travis Kelsey, one catch, one target, one yard in the first yeah. half. Kittle, and he Kittle with shut out in the first half. Kittle, Kittle shut, shut out, out in the first half, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's just crazy to me to think that the Chiefs are that freaking good and Mahomes is that freaking good. When he you is. play like that, and there's and there's he no is. there's no panic, there's no yeah. panic whatsoever. They just go about oh. their business. Halftime speech for the ages from Andy Reid, and they come out on fire in the second half. Man, it was it was crazy. Well, here's what I want to get to you about before we get into the the second half, which was bonkers and all the machinations of it. You can't win the game in the first half of the Super Bowl, but you can lose it. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. the 49ers lost the game in the first half. It was an absolutely dominant performance by San Francisco in the first half. And for them to go into the half only up by one possession, that felt like a loss. And I get it. The Chiefs sputtered out to start the second half as well. Mahomes missed time the pitch to Pacheco, although I think that was more on Pacheco than Mahomes. Yeah, and you know, They I couldn't agree. get anything started. But it, it, as, as well as the 49ers played in the first half, for you to only go in up by seven it felt like you let the game slip away from you right then and there. Yeah, I mean, look, and, and Purdy started exceptionally well, like, like on eight for eleven fire. on fire, and then sort of sputtered down into the last really fourth quarter of the game. That's why. That's why I said I was like, this game's sort of boring. And I know you don't you disagree with me, but I, I felt like here. it was a good special teams game and a good defensive battle game. But when Sam Fran didn't capitalize on the turnover um, yeah. from the homes and the Chiefs, like that was a big deal. To me, like yeah. like like San Fran got zero points off of two KC turnovers. That that's yeah. the difference in the game right there. And I even tweeted it out. We talked about it before. If you let this Patrick Mahomes led Chiefs offense and this Chiefs defense just stick around, like yeah. keep it within one score, like it's going to end up in trouble. Like you know, eventually Patrick Mahomes is going to do what Patrick Mahomes does, and that's go down and score. I mean, it was like an offensive explosion the last eight or nine minutes of the fourth quarter in overtime. I'm like, where has that been the whole game? And honestly, I talked about it a little bit maybe two weeks ago on the show. It's like, especially going into Super Bowl, teams are nervous. Like, I don't care what, like, it looked like the Chiefs were in energy saving mode the first quarter yeah. and the second quarter and be like, ah. Eh, you know what? I knew it was going to go into OT, maybe double OT, because do you remember CBS uh, outgoing president? Oh, Tom yeah. said, hey, Sean hey, we're going to have the first ever double overtime game. I'm like, the NFL is I retweeted scripted. It. Like, I, I it's retweeted scripted. Yeah. Yes. It's just like, yeah. what are we doing? And then the Chiefs were just like, it just, both teams, other than the offense for San Fran, I thought started just really slow. Like, it was just a boring first yeah. half. They, they got that 45-minute halftime with the Usher performance and all that 
jazz. Yeah. It took forever. They were late getting that on. And then just decided, hey, you know what? It's time to play some football. It's time to play some real football, score some points. Well, to your point, there's a couple things I want to get to before we talk about Mahomes, who's, who's just so far an outlier now. People like if you're, if, you're, if you're trying to denigrate what we're seeing from you, you're just making shit up right now. Okay, you're just totally. making shit up because yeah. it's not – like just go away. Like you don't understand a go, thing. Like, go away. Some guy was giving me grief on Twitter. I, te- I texted something about the Chiefs, and they, and they said, did they pay you to, to tweet that? Mm. And his handle was, why do I watch sports? And I said, no, but I can understand why your name on Twitter is, why do I watch sports? Because you don't have a <laughs> fucking clue. You know? Boom. But I mean, like, t- but t- to this point, what you just said is why I will die on this hill forever. And Mahomes is the reason they won the game. But the only reason they were in the game was because of defense and special teams. Look at the Chiefs' special teams in this game. Okay, uh, they block a kick. Uh, they they get a uh, they get a muffed punt. They get a fifty-seven yarder from Harris Butker, the longest field goal in Super Bowl history. By the way. Feel bad for Moody. His longest <laughs> yeah. field goal in Super Bowl history didn't even last a half, man. I mean, what did are we doing? Like, didn't even Super make Bowl it to halftime. Less than 30 yeah. minutes. But, but, to, but to your point, right, the Chiefs defense kept him in the game. The special teams were the real stars of this game. And totally. the coaching from Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator, and Andy Reid's play calling in the second half all led to this victory, which was executed by Patrick Mahomes. So this is why it says on my Twitter bio, as much as I believe Patrick Mahomes is the outlier of all effing outliers in the history of sports, not just in the history of football, in the history of sports, okay? Teams win games. Wins and losses are not a quarterback stat. Teams win games. Teams win championships. And to me, that was the overall experience I got from this game. This was an entire team effort from Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd agree with you, but also Mahomes had over 400 yards of offense and he's, two touchdowns. He's insane. So he's insane. I think I think wins may be this quarterback stat because he took over the game in the second half. But yeah, I, I would agree with you. Like the coaching job that Andy Reid has done this year, you, you know, honestly, offensively, it's the worst offense that they've been a part of with Patrick Mahomes in, in like six years as a starter. Okay, I get that, but to stick with it through all the receivers' drops, through oh all the, the injuries, yeah. through everything that you're doing. Keep this team together, even when you're losing, like, four out of six or whatever they, what have they lost. Something crazy. Four I don't even six. know what they lost. Yeah. Four out of six, four yeah. Four six, yeah. So I two, guess I do know four, what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, and they <laughs> go through that, and then he keeps it together. Spags has the defense rolling, and it's just an all-encompassing job. And then, look, dude, Mahomes, Okay. Like, I just keep going back to it. Third Super Bowl win in six years as a starter. Third Super Bowl MVP in six years as a starter. He's only 28 years old. He's only 28. Go ahead and go to him. Like, like seriously, like, I just don't know what else he can do. He had, like, no receivers that were playmakers, like, throughout the year, other than Travis Kelsey. Like, like Rasheed Rice, finally, I think he's going to be a guy next year. But he's a rookie. MVS stepped up at major times in this uh, playoffs. Miko Hartman, two huge catches. Like, obviously the game winner, but that 53-yarder where 31 for the, the San Francisco 49ers just got turned around. Like, what are you doing? Like, huge right. plays at huge times. And, oh, by the way, they pulled out Corn Dog when they needed it the most. They back-to-back years, game-winning play, call Corn Dog, let's go, huge win. And yeah, dynasty. It's it's a it's a full on dynasty. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about that right now. For those that don't know what you're talking about, Corn Dog was the play they called twice in the Super Bowl against the Eagles. One to Kadarius Tony, who they were so confident they could win without him, they didn't make him active uh, for yeah. this game. And then they called the same play to Sky Moore on the other side, and he ran the wrong route. And those were the last two touchdowns in the game for the Kansas City Chiefs. Corn Dog, and they pulled that one out in and out, and Miko Hardman comes away Huge. with the touchdown. By the by the way, with all due respect to Joe Flacco, Miko Hardman started the season benched by the Jets and he ends up catching the game-winning touchdown in overtime as time is running out in the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, Miko Hardman is the comeback player of the year. Like, comeback like, player of the give, year. Give, Joe, Joe, you got to return the award, baby. I mean, I love you and we were That's big hilarious. Joe Flacco fans all year long, but uh-uh. No. Ixnay, it is Miko Hardman who came back from the ashes of the Jets' freaking disaster with the world's most annoying player in Aaron Rodgers to come back and catch the game-winning Super Bowl touchdown in overtime. But but to what you're saying, all right, do we want? Let, let's let's start and end. It is a dynasty. There's no question yeah, about it now. Easy. There's no debate. 
It, it's, it's not, if, if you feel that it's not, then there's something wrong with you. Okay. Yeah. It's, you're the problem. If you don't, do not there's, understand yeah, there's not a this feel is a thing. Dynasty. It's just pure facts. Yeah. This, this, these are just, these are just the numbers. Four yeah. Super Bowls in five years. First back to back since the Patriots in Super Bowl 38 and 39. Uh, eight straight AFC oh. West titles. They've never not made it to the AFC Championship game since Patrick Mahomes became, became the starter. If that's not your definition of a, di- of a dynasty, do the crossword. Do yeah. Sudoku. Uh, do, you know, Scrabble. Sports ain't your thing, man. Scrabble. Yeah, no, totally. And then honestly, Trey, it's never been done. And Travis Kelsey said it on the podium. He's obviously yeah. coming back. Big news because there were some whispers and rumors that he, he was may never not. not coming back. But, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, okay. Um, but three Pete, like it's never yeah. been done before, yeah. ever in the history. And if yeah. you just go ahead and mark them as Super Bowl favorites for next year, because it's never doubt been done. them at your own peril. Look, that's yeah. something that Patrick Mahomes will have for the rest of his life if he gets it over anyone that's ever played. Yeah. Uh, Joe Montana, Tom Brady, anyone. He, no one's done it. If he does it, then there's going to be, at 29 years old, if he does it, he's going to be the greatest football player to ever live. Easy. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. And, and here's, here's why I say uh, I, I think that Patrick Mahomes is not only the greatest football player of this generation, I think he's going to be the greatest uh, football player uh, of all time when it's all said and done. No He's doubt. done something that no one has done in the history of team sports now. Okay, let me explain. He now has three championships, two regular season MVPs, and three Super Bowl MVPs. Wow. So let's just take three championships and two regular season MVPs through the first seven seasons. Uh, Larry Bird did that. Bill Russell did that. Mickey Mantle did that. Stan Musial did that. Joe DiMaggio did that. Guy Lafleur in the NHL did oh that. He is the first football player. He is the first football player ever to join the list of these immortal. And we're, we're, these are all the greatest of all time uh, when, yeah. when you look at them. So you're How talking you in all of sports, sports, man. Patrick Mahomes in is all the of, guy in all of sports. In all of sports, we now have wow. this. Okay? So, and he also has three MVPs to go with it. Uh, three Super Bowl MVPs or whatever. The yeah. Stanley Cup Finals, NBA MVPs, you know, World Series MVP. However you want to slice yeah. it. He's done that better than anybody else in their chosen profession. And he's only 28 years old. But here's the thing that really drives home the point for me, okay? And I get it. It's a team game. If the Chiefs didn't have their special teams, if, if the defense didn't stand up, if Steve Spagnola didn't dial up, and we'll get to coaching in a minute, if he didn't dial up all those, zero, those uh, all-out zero-cover blitzes uh, in, yeah. in critical situations, they wouldn't have made it to overtime, and they, would have, they might have had to need a touchdown to tie in overtime. But here's the number that I want people to focus on. The NFL has kept quarterback stats since 1950. That's, the, that's as far back as they can reliably go. Okay? I'm going to like this. This was the 11th game in Patrick Mahomes' postseason career where the Chiefs were down by seven or more points. Oh, okay, they were down 10. By the way, in all three of the Super Bowl wins, they've been down double digits. Okay, they were down 10 nothing. This one, they were down 20, they were down 10 at the half to the, to the Eagles, and they were down 10 with eight minutes to play in Super Bowl 54 against the 49ers. They won all three. So, but, but anyway, bear with me. So, the 11th game in the, in the postseason career of the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes as their starting quarterback, that they were down by seven or more points. They are 9-2 and two in those games. 9-2. 9-2. Right. Yeah. That's a winning percentage of over 800. For perspective, minimum 10 games. You have to have minimum 10 games yeah. to make this it's a, lot. a qualifier. And yeah, yeah, it's a lot. And this is now uh, the 11th game. You know what the second best quarterback team winning percentage is? In that situation, when you're down by seven or more points in playoff games, you want to take a guess? Like 45%, right? Yeah, it's Tom, well, it's a little better than that. It's Tom Brady. Uh, his teams are 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Uh, well, I mean, okay. that's like really Un- close. That was at 48%. Yeah, exactly. It's like you went to Mizzou <laughs> or something. Uh, they're, uh, but the point is, they're under 500. They're un- these teams with those quarterbacks are under 500. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes almost doubles that winning percentage with his team. He is never out of a game. Think about this for a second. They've won a playoff game where they were down 24 to nothing. They won the first AFC game, championship game where they were down 10 to nothing twice. Uh, they won each of their Super Bowls, all three of them, where they were down at least 10 points in every one of those games. Yeah. It is never over as yeah. long as you have 15. And that's why I said when you're betting this game, remember it's in Vegas. And you know what the rule is in Vegas? <laughs> The house always wins. The Chiefs are the 
fucking house. Okay, yeah. Yeah. they're the house. Three three wins, four appearances in five years, three Super Bowl wins. The first, wow. I mean, th- if you bet against them, you're just dumb or yeah. you're a fan, which I understand. Yeah. If you if you bet with passion. Fine, I understand that. I respect that. That's what fans are. They're fanatics. They're not logical. They're not smart. They play with passion. They play with their heart. But if you're a logical person, and in this day and age of the NFL, if you're betting about Patrick Mahomes, I have one question for you. What are you doing? Like, yeah. what are you doing? What else do you need to know? What else do you need to see from this guy that's going to make you think, yeah, I don't think they're getting it done this time. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the only thing I kept thinking about during that epic rant of yours, which I loved, by the way, that should just be our whole show, because um, that was, honestly, that was really good. That was really good. Um, was like, why? Like, why? How, how, do, how does Mahomes do it? Like, what makes him different? What, what separates him? Why is he that guy? What, and honestly, like, it's really hard to point out. There's a few things. One... Obviously, like, what I was thinking is not even, like, the physical attributes. Because, like, look, the physical attributes are there. He can throw the ball a quarter mile. It's his spatial awareness in the pocket, okay? He is able to just find the right guy at the right time, buy time when time needs to be bought. But also just there's that Patrick Mahomes effect. Like, like David uh, Carr had NFL Research do a study on dropped – interceptions or interceptions called back by penalty since okay, Mahomes okay, has so, been the starter. Okay, but hold on here. Like a lot of times as a quarterback, you know when there's a flag, hey, it's a free play. Let's go see what happens. You know just that, listen. right? Yeah, just right, listen. Okay, right. So you know because that going in. Right. Totally. However, <laughs> okay, so Mahomes, so, so I'm going to – because I'm you, you got me off track with that. So, so Mahomes, okay, has fifty-two interceptions that were either called back by penalty or dropped since he entered the league. The next highest person, Josh Allen, at twenty. Twenty. Fifty-two in twenty. There's a Mahomes effect, and I'm not saying the Chiefs. Are getting the calls, and I'm not. I'm not pointing that out. However, however, look at you roll your eyes. You can say it. It is interesting to me that that Mahomes effect on the refs, on the other team when you're playing the other. Like you just look across us, and I've been there. I've been there, Trey. It's it's 100 true. Like when we had them beat, we beat them in 2021 when we went to what was the, the Chiefs final score early in the season. Oh yeah, 20, yeah, you're right. You're right. You, you, no, it was, no, it's 2021. Uh, you guys, 20, 20, you guys, Staley was on a heater. He could, he could, yeah. he went fourth for a fourth and goal for the seven. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Um, anyway, we beat them, and the whole time I was thinking, and, and look, I don't think we beat them again. So when when I played them, but you're over there looking like, man, like <laughs> there better be no time left on the clock. Like you, you got to do things that you normally don't do. Like like yeah. it, he transcends like. Everyone that he plays, bro, it, it, it is that effect that he has on coaching, that he has on analytics, that he has on everyone. And no one in any sport I've ever seen has that effect on him. And it's just you have to play them completely different. And he's got his worst offensive skill playmakers, in all, and he still wins. Like, it, it's just yeah. it's hard to explain, but that's the Mahomes effect. Well, to, to, to that point about the, the dropped interceptions or whatever, callback as a penalty, that's because maybe he's more alert about the penalties than anybody else. I'm just going to throw that out there. Oh, it's a flag? Chuck it up. See what happens. It's a free play. <laughs> now, I, I will say, to your point, like Marquez Valdez-Scantling had a couple of great catches, but he runs freaking backwards in overtime. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? You know? But, but, Even Mahomes but is like, what? T- yeah, well, Chris Jones is on the sidelines. Like, yeah, I saw a fall down, man. Doing, like, bro. fall down. Oh, but but I, we don't get to this game. And we don't get to overtime. And we don't get to the fact that the Chiefs need a touchdown to win instead of a touchdown to tie uh, without Steve Spagnola. Because at the end of the game, at the two-minute warning, it was third and five. All right? If the 49ers get a first down, they can essentially run it down to a few seconds left, kick the game-winning field goal. Spags dials up pressure. They, the, the, the blitzer comes right up the front, yep. and, and the ball has to be dirted. And then on the, on the, on the uh, first overtime drive, where they held the ball for over seven and a half minutes, 
Third down and five again. Jennings. And what happens? Jennings is wide open. By the way, Jennings is going to win MVP. If, you called it, by the way. Oh, Pat, dude. Standing O. Yes. Standing O to my man Chase Daniel. Because if the Niners had won that game, Juwan Jennings was going to be the MVP of the game. 100%. No question about it. 100%. He was awesome. And he was open for what could have been potentially a Super Bowl winning touchdown. But once again, what did Steve Spagnola do? He dialed up the pressure. Like yeah. Spagnola knew exactly when to call the dogs on and to call them off. And I thought he was masterful once again after a rough first half where they were getting shredded on the ground and, and the motion clearly of the Kyle Shanahan offense oh, had the Chiefs dude. defense on their heels. Yeah, and I think that's the that's the thing. Like Spags, I think, pressured Purdy more than he probably wanted to going in. But but I will say, like, the first half, like you gotta give the the W to Kyle Shanahan. We'll get to him later. But like he he out yeah. he out coached Andy Reid and C. Sagnola in the first half easily. Like he did. Now yeah. they didn't score points, but just schematically on offense versus uh, defense, like Spag, like uh, uh, Shanahan won that one. And I think what uh, when Spags went back to the locker room, they ended up, hey, let's just pressure a little bit more. We got to play really good defense on the edge. And it's not like they were doing a bunch of this um, double edge pressure where they're playing too high. They were going all out zero tray, and it was like time and time again and i will say like san fran for the most part they have hots built in and they were an empty a lot and they were throwing hots but there were times like you said those two plays exactly what you said are the plays that they did not have an answer for hot so purdy did a good job just throwing away not taking a sack like that one to jennings i'm telling you that was escape route down in the in the uh, red zone was was huge and i think that is what made the difference and then spags i mean look he's the first ever four-time Super Bowl winning coordinator. Like, give him his, like, how come he hasn't been talked about as a head coach? Because of what well, because he's he, like, I, I don't because, get it. You know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you exactly why. I'll tell you exactly why. Because he, when he got his opportunity, he took the Rams job, and the Rams were terrible in the late 2000s. Like, Everyone whether it's fair or unfair, chance. that's, I, I 100% agree with you. But that's, you asked the question, yeah. that's exactly why. He went to be maybe the head coach like, of the Rams. he just likes calling defense and doesn't have to and worry the Rams about were all asked. BS. And, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? No. Norv Turner was a much better mm -hmm. offensive coordinator than he was a head coach. There yeah, are totally. people who are better suited to be a coordinator than they are a head coach. And, you know, yeah. with the success you're having with this team, uh, you know, it'd be hard. It'd be, you'd be hard-pressed to give it up. So, um, uh, yeah, Spagnola is absolutely amazing. And I got to say, I felt like I felt like the Chiefs lost the game when they had a first and goal from the four and they had to settle for a field goal. I was like, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I, I, th I thought that was their opportunity. And then what did Spags do? On third and five, dialed up that pressure, drew the incomplete. Moody kicked the field goal. And it's like, we have a chance. And they went to, they, they went, they went to town and went to overtime. I, although I do think, did you see the replay uh, on the last play before uh, that Butker tied the game to send it into overtime? Rashi Rice was wide open. Mahomes oh, yeah. was locked on Kelsey, and yeah. I understand yep. why you would be. And there wide was you know, there was only ten seconds left. But if he you're had saying looked, the little back shoulder that he tried to the edge, and you're saying if you were yes, at Rashi Rice, yeah, uh, yeah. Rashi Rice was wide open oh, yeah. over yeah. the middle. That was the one thing that, that play, I think that play was uh, identical. Made a mistake right? in. That play was identical yeah. to the one they they scored on the Ravens. That little out and up. They were trying to get it yeah. on Fred Warner, which yeah. they had it on. Um, like all pro safety, Kyle Hamilton, they hit it, and I was surprised they didn't hit it on Warner. But yeah, that was Rasheed Rice was open. Yeah, he was. And, and by the way, before we do anything else, I feel bad for Kyle Shanahan, right? I feel bad for Kyle. Like I'm looking at people that saying, you know, he lost, he played to hold, not to win. I think that's complete bullshit. When you call a wide receiver a throwback pass across the field to Christian McCaffrey, that's the definition of going for it. That's not holding. And go for it on that's fourth and three when you could have kicked the field goal and tie it. Going forward on fourth and three, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's not holding. That's not holding. That's going no. for it. Spagnola just dialed up better pressure in two key yeah. situations. At the end of the game, which forced a field goal, and in overtime, which also forced a field goal, Spags won those two matchups. That's well, not, yeah. That is absolutely not uh, playing for hold. He was playing to win. Spags just played a better card. And I, and I think without a doubt, like you can look at this game if you know football at all or have watched football a day in your life and think – Man, the San Francisco 49ers did not lose this game. The Kansas City Chiefs right. won this game and took this game. I thought San yeah. Fran, really in all aspects, played a pretty clean game other than the two turnovers, a muffed punt, and then um, what was the other one? of uh, The other turnover that they had? It was a muffed punt. Yeah, well, and, 
Oh, they had the uh, the oh, CMC. fumble. CMC, yeah. yeah. CMC so, fumble. like, they, 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 in my opinion, played really well. And it's just, it does sort of suck for Shanahan because he still has yet to get his first Super Bowl win. Yeah, I and look, I, I feel bad for him because I, I don't think he played conservative. He, he abandoned the run no. a couple of times in the second half, which I thought was whatever. But, like, you know, they dialed it up. And per, we have to say, for a lot of this game, Brock Purdy played with more composure than Patrick Mahomes. No, yeah. I mean, he did. I mean, he started off like eight of eleven. I, it was wild. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to hear anybody else say any of these oh ridiculous God. takes about Brock Purdy. Just shut yeah. up, okay? Yeah. Just watch the game. What happened a couple of times is that the pressure got to him before he could make the decision. That's that's yeah. that, that that that's all it was. That's all yeah. it was. Okay. Totally. It was it was a it was a dialed up pressure that got him off what he was supposed to do. And sometimes that happens. The other team gets paid too. The other team gets yeah. paid too. And honestly, he didn't. He didn't take. He didn't make like those plays. Like you see, a lot of younger rookie second year guys just chuck the ball up in the air. He threw it away, or he took a sack. He lived to fight another down. I thought he played really well the entire game. He was on to the next play. He never let one play sit with him or not, and he protected the football. And like, what else do you want? Like he he made some amazing throws. I mean, they they were just throwing dagger after dagger after dagger on the Chiefs, and it finally like got going in the fourth quarter. He had a lull in the second and third quarter, got going in the fourth quarter. I thought he played – he gave him a chance to win. And he, yeah. he – like, you can't do much more than that. Like, you drive him on that first drive of OT, you get down Take there – seven and a half like, minutes want, off the clock. Yeah, and you want, and you want to be able to, um, you know, throw that Jennings escape route. Oh, by the way, were you the only one – or I know there were a lot of people because this is the first time the new postseason overtime rules had really been enacted. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And and so there's a few times I'm not gonna lie and say, oh, you only knew this. Like I know the overtime rules. Like both teams get a chance to possess the football because I think that's the Buffalo uh, game against Mahomes. That, Buff- that yeah, Josh the, the 13 get. second yeah. game forever. And, the 13 second game. Yeah. And then, but didn't you think? And Romo, I got to give him credit. He was on it. Like when the clock was running down in the first overtime and the Chiefs hadn't scored, I was like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. like I thought, I thought that maybe the game could have ended in overtime of the first overtime if the Chiefs didn't score. But Romo was yeah. like, Romo was on it. He's like, listen, I know everyone's probably out there because it's never been done before. Like, hey, right. no, it's just going to go to the second quarter. So you could have – that would have been wild, like a second overtime and only two drives. Like, I was a little bit just, like, wondering what was going on, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, I, well, it was funny. We were talking as we were watching the game. And when the Niners won the coin toss and the people started cheering, it's like, how many people really thought, yeah. oh, uh, all we need is a touchdown to win? Like, Everyone. I don't think anybody understood. No, no, every, they're going to get another opportunity no matter yeah. what. Like, I think like 10% of, yeah, we're going to score, we're going to win. No, bro. I new questioned rules. if Kyle Shanahan knew and for maybe forgot because I'm like, wouldn't you want to go on defense for us first? Because all right, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Because yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem well, with that because I, I thought the Niners' defense dictated the line of scrimmage for most of this game, yeah. right? For most um, of this game. So let's – I mean, they needed a fourth down and one conversion to keep the game alive. And, of course, yeah. Mahomes called Mahomes, a, and Andy Reid called a perfect yeah. play. But I would um, absolutely take the ball and put the pressure on somebody knowing what they yeah. had to do. I absolutely. disagree. I disagree only um, – like, I was, I was surprised when he took the ball because if I am Mahomes, okay, and say Purdy goes down and – you know, that he has three drives to work with, okay? So, sorry, he has three downs to work with in terms yeah. of, hey, on fourth down, you're punting it or you're kicking a field goal. If you're the deferring team, if they end up scoring, you have four downs. That's a big yeah. difference, 25% more. To, like, to me, I'd rather have the four downs, know what I need, and then if I go down and I'm able to kick a field goal after the first, like, I know exactly what I need. So I did think, it's not like, hey, if I score first, like normal overtime, I win. So I did think that, in my opinion, from a schematic and strategic standpoint, like I do think that if I was in Shanahan's position, I would have deferred. Winners want the ball. To quote the replacements, they did. Winners want the ball. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, Mahomes. Winners want the ball, though. You want that opportunity. You want that opportunity. Yeah. And it's like it was fourth and one. I'm like, yeah, Mahomes is keeping this ball. He's not handing. Well, when they got in shotgun on back to back snaps, I was thinking, like, what are you doing? Like, before before we move on to something else, sweet. Did, did you think, like, the Chiefs got hosed on almost every third and fourth down spot? Like, I felt like they were shorted there was two almost a half a yard on yeah. every one of those spots. Yeah, on every there, one of them, right? There's one that right? Kelsey was clearly over, and they, they marked over the line. fourth and one. They should have like, challenged it. Yeah. They should have challenged it. Yeah. 
All right. So anyway, so we got a lot more to get to. The Chiefs absolutely won in Vegas, but there was somebody else that won in Vegas. And I got a chance to speak with him. Uh, he has a new vodka coming out called Poor Osos for Bears because his podcast with Tom Segura is Two Bears, One Cave, BFFs. Uh, at Super Bowl week, I had a chance to talk to a very, very well-lubricated uh, Burt Kreischer. Absolutely thrilled to be joined on the 3013 podcast, chasing it here, by the machine, Burt Kreischer. Uh, Burt, how is the machine? Is the machine lubed right now? Are we oiled and ready to go as we're recording this early on a Friday morning? Buddy. I am hammered. I've been drinking all night. I started drinking in the morning. I can't help it. I can't help it. This is, you know, look, this isn't work for me. This is just fun. This is the fun stuff. You know, the work is staying sober for the show, putting on a good show. We got a show at the MGM Garden Arena Saturday night. Friday, I'm just partying. Yeah. How do you do it, man? I mean, I know you get the nickname of the machine because you go harder than anybody and then you then you clean it all up. But how do you get the balance? Like, how do you make that work? Yeah, it's 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 a, uh, well, uh, anxiety, I think. Number one, it's about <laughs> being punitive in the mornings and waking up and feeling like one day I will die. It will go dark. I'll be looking in my wife's eyes and that's the last person I'll see. So you better get up and get on the treadmill, buddy. It's that you don't want that to happen today. So, yeah, I am. I am an anomaly, I think, in that. I love to party, but I do love working out. I love working out. I love sweating. I'm in the sauna, I'm in the cold plunge. I get morning sun, all the stuff that they tell you to do online. I do, but I also booze it up. I love the sparkle of a buzz. I love it. I'm feeling it right now. Well, listen, t- you, you got your new vodka, right? Porosos, which means four bears. Obviously, yeah. a, a play off the podcast you have with Tom Segura. Two bears, one cave, and I are BFFs. Um, are it, now, listen, I heard you were a big Tito's guy, man. So is this is this hard for you? Because I'm I'm a Tito's yeah. guy, too. So uh, th- this has got to be, like, good and bad at the same time. It was tough. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I got emotional. This sounds so stupid right now. But I got emotional when I ordered my last Tito's and soda. Because uh, my, my, for years, my order's been... Double Tito soda, big glass, no lime. It, I, it just comes out of my mouth. When I took my daughters yeah. to Italy, they were like, uh, I was like, you know, they're like 19 and 8, 17. I was like, you guys can drink here if you want. And they're like, really? And so the waiter came over. My daughter, Georgia, goes, double Tito soda, big glass, no lime. I go, no, you can have wine with your dinner. What are you doing? She goes, well, that's what I've heard you say. It was tough the last time I ordered one. And now it, it rolls off the tongue, double O and soda. It sounds so beautiful. But, you know, I, look, I am a big Tito's guy. I've always been a big Tito's guy. Uh, I think it was a misstep for them to not bring me into the company, personally, considering the owner's name is Bert also. But uh, when we went and, and tasted the vodka, I looked for a similar vodka. I'm not going to lie to you. A well-rounded vodka that doesn't overwhelm the drink, that allows you to drink it straight on the rocks, drink it neat. We can drink this neat. And uh, and you can mix with anything. And And, and it really, honestly just brings fun to you. Me and Tommy tasted them together. We landed on two. We then taste tested them on our podcast. And uh, I, I love this vodka. I love it so much. Yeah. I'm drinking it this morning. Well, there you go. And by the way, fun fact, you said Tito's first name is, I mean, Tito's vodka's first name is Bert. His last name is Beverage. It's spelled differently, but that's that's my favorite thing. The guy's last name is Beverage, which I think is one of the greatest things Well, you know, time. you know, Randy the Macho Man Savage, that wasn't his real name either. <laughs> also true. Also true. Um, hey, you know, so, Terry Bollet is Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, listen, are you uh, – I, I know you're a big football fan. I know you're a Bucks guy. You're, 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 you're – uh, went to FSU. Um, but what is it about having the Super Bowl here this week that has been the most fun for you? Uh, so I got to be honest with you, the Super Bowl sucks. Like, the actual Super Bowl sucks. Like, Correct. going to the game, I went to the game last year, I paid $120,000 for six tickets. Way overpaid. Way overpaid. Yeah. This year, I'm rolling out. We have a show Saturday night. I'm rolling out at like 4 in the morning on my bus. I'm heading back to L.A. But this event, Media Row, uh, Radio Row, Seeing that Eli Manning is right there. He's right oh, there. And, yeah, Eli's and boring. This is Trust me, Eli's is. boring. He's nothing. Eli's nothing. He's, I a, bet he he's is. boring. I bet he's a drip. Both <laughs> those, listen, you can't have a dad like like Archie and be and be a partier. You think he was like, boys, take your shirt off. Have a good time. It's New Orleans. No. He was like, oh, guys, run routes. 
middle brother's going to run her out. Eli, throw a pass. Uh, yeah, I, I, this, this, this is really fun for a fan. And, and, and I, I always go back to this, but, like, if you don't love stuff, if you're not a lover of life, then this doesn't make sense to you. If you're a hater and you love watching people fail, don't come here. But if you love running into Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, they're all here. I had pizza with Derek Brooks, number 55, 2014 yep. Hall of Fame inductee, 2000 Walter Payton Man of the Year. That's that. I mean, if you're a fan, this is amazing. I wish more fans could experience Radio Row. Because, you look, I had to work my yeah. ass off to get on Radio Row. But it's cool as crap. Man, I saw Shannon Sharp yesterday. It's the coolest. I was drinking with Jason Kelsey at a bar until 3 in the morning last night. That. Now I'll never lose that. I'll, you, never, you, I'll never lose how much fun that is. Are you pissed that Jason stole your bit in Buffalo? Like he took off buddy, the shirt, he did the buddy. thing. Listen, <laughs> it's funny when it happened. I got I got blown up. My my socials yeah. went crazy, and they're like, "Bert was at the, the the Chiefs game," and then I saw. Now me and Tom have been calling out the Kelsey brothers on our podcast. So when I saw right. it, I was like, I just want to know if he thought about me once. <laughs> He's the it, it, buddy. His wife yeah. is a gangster, also. Like real. Yeah. Last night at the party, just like my wife, not drinking, holding it down, tapped him on the shoulder. We're out. That man, he's the coolest dude in the world. I could never be jealous of that guy for his his success. I just celebrate that dude. Give him love. Yeah, no, it, it was really cool. Um, and it's fun to see. It was the so cool that he sort of played it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, okay, here's the question I have to ask you. Like, are, where are you on your uh, on your Bucks fandom here? What do you think of uh, how Tampa Bay did? What do you think about Baker Mayfield? Um, we're telling secrets on this podcast, apparently. The, Correct. Uh, Baker Mayfield, I have a hard push for him to stay in Tampa. I was with Baker yesterday and his wife, Emily, and I, I know where I want their, their – Emily's pregnant. I know where I want their daughter to go to school in Tampa, Academy of the Holy Names. Uh, I know where I want them to move. I want them to move – over to Davis Island where Gronk lives. Uh, I am committed. And listen, Brian Gla- Gra- Glazer, if you're listening, I'm going to do the hard push. I'm going to call in the media. I'm going to start a groundswell. We need Baker Mayfield. We need Baker Mayfield. Mike, Mike Evans, I am. I love that team. I love that city. I never had civic pride growing up in Florida. Just in Tampa, we didn't have it. Back in the 70s, yeah. everyone made fun of us. Everyone still makes yeah. fun of Florida. But I got civic yeah. pride now. Because of those people. And so I am. I want him to stay. He's a great guy. He's a great, great guy and, and the best ass I've ever seen. <laughs> Baker is Tampa. His ass is a badonk. A badonk. Yeah. Buddy, I took a picture of me and him and our asses together. It, his yeah. ass is explosive. See, these are things we are telling secrets because that I that that's something I was not expecting to come out of Bert Kreischer's mouth today. So uh, we know we know. Buddy, that, uh, look around. Jason, you yeah. look around the NFL. The the thing yeah. that's different about these guys is their asses. That's yeah. what separates the men from the boys. A big solid yep. ass. Baker's got son. It. Son, what do you want to be? I want a football player. Get a solid ass, and it's all yours. That's all it takes. Yes. Work on your glutes. Perfect. It's there all about go. explosivity. Explosivity and a little uh, poor Osos vodka. Bert, I know you're busy. We appreciate the yeah, time. Right. Huge fan. Thanks for being with us. And, uh, you know, feel free to take your shirt off right now if you want to. Trey, I've already had notes from the NFL to keep it on. Yeah. Ooh. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Again, thanks to Bert. By the way, uh, I don't know if the NFL got mad at him for for taking his shirt off, but I think we were the only pod that got him to take his shirt off in the media center. So I I consider that a giant win all the way around. Obviously, it's a giant win for the Chiefs. They're going for a three-peat. They should be favored. If they're not, then nobody knows what the hell they're talking about. But they have some serious decisions to make, right? First of all, Chase, they have to revamp the, uh, they have to revamp the wide receiver room. They've got to go out and get one or two guys. Holy Sky Moore, I, don't think it was, I think it was active. It didn't have a catch. Okay? Marcos Valdez-Scantling should probably be cut. He's not worth the money. Uh, they got Rasheed Rice. Justin Watson was on a one-year deal. They're going to have to upgrade the wide receivers, right? First and foremost, Holy they have to find more depth at wide receiver. I mean, that's the biggest issue in, on their team. And, and you're looking at the, the defensive side of the ball. Like, they're pretty set. They drafted really well a couple years ago. Um, yeah. Really good linebacking core. Maybe go get an, another edge rusher, maybe, but with the receiver well, room. And this is what yeah. we talked about, too. 
we talked about this even before we started this year, like one of our first podcasts, I'll always remember it. And I brought up the point and same with you and you agreed, like the chiefs were okay going into the year with that receiver room. If you remember sky Moore uh, and all these guys going into training camp, like Andy Reid was talking him up, like sky Moore was the next Tyree kill. And like yeah. Veach was saying, like all these things, and you're building this this team up. You go into the year with MVS as your number one. Look, I think that's the only thing that's lacking on this team right now is the receiver room. Yeah, they played well enough. Down and he threw for 330 stretch. yards at a Super yeah, Bowl. Right? I mean, it's, it's just like come crazy. on, man. And yeah. and so I, I think that they would be such a scary team with a true number one receiver. Like, like 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 an actual speed burner at receiver or like a T Higgins even like somebody like that well, who's yeah. a free it's agent it, yeah. needs to come in and help Mahomes out. Well, you know who else is a free agent? Is Mike Evans. I'm just going to throw that hey. out. Hey. Mike Evans has made a lot of money in his career and Let's uh, go. put one of these on. Put one of these yeah. on. The other yeah. thing for the Chiefs, they have some decisions. Do you want to catch balls from real- Baker or Patrick Mahomes? I mean, like that's like saying, do you want filet mignon or do you want a dirty water dog from the streets of New York City? Um, with all due respect to Baker, whom I love, and I hope he continues yeah, to play Baker really well too, for a long time. Like, I love yeah. Baker, but yeah. it ain't the same thing. Like, it's just not the same thing. Well, they, have some, they have some decisions on defense. Willie Gay, LeJarius Sneed, Chris Jones, all free agents. Drew, Drew Tranquil, who played Gribbs on a one-year contract. Tranquil's gone. Willie Gay's probably gone. I think they'd like to find a way to keep Chris Jones and Sneed. I don't know how yeah. you feel about it. But if, if for me, if it's a guy who brings constant pressure or a cover corner, give me the pressure guy all the time because a pressure guy can eliminate all the receivers. The cover yeah. corner can only get rid of one. Yeah, and I don't think that – I mean, look, they're going to – from what I've heard, they're going to try everything in their right power to keep Chris Jones. Like, Chris Jones is yeah. not only what he does on the field, right? Like, that. Yeah. obviously, he's a great – but, like, his locker room presence, other than Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, he's like that third dude in that locker room that is just always in it from a leadership standpoint. And LeJarrius Sneed, like he's going to get paid a lot of money. And I just don't know if the chiefs can afford it with Mahomes, like needing a raise down the, the he's already got, he's already been restructured. He's already been restructured. He's already been restructured. I just think like if he's probably going to need to get restructured two or three years from now. And then if you give LeJarrius Sneed two or three, like, you know what I'm saying? So like, especially especially when you have Watson Williams here, when you have Watson Williams and McDuffie, that you can play a corner, right? Totally. You know, McDuffie's first team yeah. All Pro, and Watson and Williams from the 2022 draft have been amazing. You get Cook back at safety, so uh, from the IR, so there's going to be some issue, there's going to be some depth there. Now yeah. there's the 49ers. Uh, if you have a question about Brock Purdy right now, then again, pick up a different sport, like pick up something else. You know, go yeah. play pickle. You know, go play tennis. Go play pickle because if, yeah. if you're if you're looking at this as oh Brock Purdy lost the game, then you're a clown. Okay. That, that's yeah, not I mean, he what happened here did. at all. No, not even close. That's not what happened here at all. Um, the question for Kyle Shanahan, though, remains. And I feel bad for him because I just think he got, he got outdone. By, sometimes the greatest player of all time stops you from what you think you should get. Ask Carl Malone. Ask Charles Barkley in the Jordan era. Ask Phil Mickelson in the Tiger Woods era. The other guy's just freaking better, okay? Yeah. But Kyle now has to live with the fact in the three Super Bowls, one as an offensive coordinator – and when they were up 28-3, to three, and he mm-hmm. called a seven-step drop on third and one with a, tw- a 16-point lead with like eight, nine minutes to play, mm-hmm. and twice against the Chiefs, he's had a double-digit lead. He's won none of those games as a head coach. I feel bad for Kyle, but that's going to be the thing. Can you get it over the goal line? Because I think he's yeah. an exceptional coach. I think he's an unbelievable coach. I think he's one of the top three coaches in football right now. Yeah. But he's still trying to get that thing. Yeah, I mean, look, it's just, it's, yeah, I mean, it's rough. 0 3 in Super Bowls, one, you know, 0 2 as a head coach, and, and both of those losses to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. And it's just like, you know, once again, it's just Patrick Mahomes proving why he's better than everyone in the world. But you look at Shanahan yeah. from, that, from that standpoint, it's just like, look, I, I think that the 49er faithful, they believe in him. And the owner believes in him. You just got to do certain things, whatever it is. It, it's so hard to, like, look back on the season and be like, like, Start the top to bottom, like throughout the entire year, other than the three game loser. Like, I think that the 49ers were a top two or three team all year long. So, like, like it's not a wire to wire type thing, but they were amazing all year long. You got to look on your roster, like, where can you get half a percent better? Like, what yeah. can you do half? Like, it's not, they're already there. Like, they're already top two or three yeah. team, like, since 2019. 
obviously like that's just how they're rolling and it's just it, it is it is so difficult because it's so hard to get to this game and you need a little bit of luck on the way and then when you get to the game you call a hell of a first half and then sort of slow in the third and fourth quarter then you get in the fourth quarter and then Mahomes does his thing and like we already said on this like I don't think I don't think Kyle Shannon lost the game it's just no. like the other team had Patrick Mahomes and they, he took the game and so yeah, I, I don't exactly know if you right. can look at it from that standpoint. Yeah, it sucks. And you're going to have to go back to the drawing board, go back in the lab, as, as these young kids like to say, and, and try to figure something out to, to get you over that, to get you over the edge. Because, you know, the one thing that's standing in the way is, is Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> you know, it's like as long as he's in the league, he's always going to be standing in your way. You've got to figure out a way to beat him. Yeah, it is. And, and I think we should close this out with, a, with something that you're probably familiar with. Mitch Holtis is an amazing job as the play-by-play guy for the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, if you think about the Chiefs, they went from Kevin Harland to Mitch Holt. It's yeah. like back-to-back yeah. guys calling games for them is incredible. He had a great line uh, after the Chiefs won the AFC Championship game a year ago when the Bengals came in and called a Burrowhead and all this stuff. Uh, and he said, you can doubt the Chiefs, you can dislike the Chiefs, you can res- disrespect the Chiefs, but you're going to have to deal with the Chiefs. So to paraphrase the great Mitch Holtis, who is unbelievable at what he does, after this Super Bowl... I would just like to say you can dislike the Chiefs, you can doubt the Chiefs, you can disrespect the Chiefs, but you're going to have to deal with the Chiefs because it is a dynasty for the Chiefs. Dynasty, baby. And for now, there is no doubt. And they have to be the presumptive favorites to be the first team in the history of the NFL to win three straight Super Bowls when the 2024-2025 season begins. Chase, it's been awesome to be with you all season. We're not done. We've got plenty more shows to go, but I just wanted to say, uh, as we've gone through this thing from preseason to now, it's been great, and we're going to keep rolling it through uh, the offseason and free agency, because March Madness now is really about NFL free agency moves. It's not about basketball anymore. It really is. So we'll be, we'll be through this all going forward for the next few weeks. So obviously good to be with you. For everybody on the show, Chinch, our producer, uh, Janko, everybody else has been a part of it. Thanks for doing it. We're going to keep it going through the offseason. Have a great weekend, everybody. Start your Monday off right, but understand we're seeing historical things in the history of the football that we've never seen before with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. 